On to the rising, Mrs. O'Brien. Mm -hmm. You made uh, breakfast for the leaders on Easter Sunday morning. I did. I had that rare privilege and I'll never forget it. They all came down to Liberty Hall. Mm -hmm. They didn't come all at once, you know, they came now and again, I think it was G Tom McDermott came by himself and so did Tom Clark. And you wouldn't know, suddenly one of them would erupt into the room. They all came by different ways, of course, they were all out in different places. But they just got the common, ordinary Irish breakfast of bacon and eggs, <laughs> rashes and eggs and tea. But I can see them sitting in that little room in Liberty Hall. One or two, there was never more than two at the table because only a small table. McDonough, he used to joke you a lot, isn't he? I was a very gay soul. I always felt, you know, that he lifted a, a, the atmosphere in any place up to a gay level. I don't know what it was about him because he wasn't a big person, you know, he was rather slight, not tall, but. I remember now when we were going away, you see, they were sending us back to uh, the north with the dispatches from the council, Pierce and the others, and um, we were watching it. They wanted to get us out so that we would be back in the north by 12 o'clock, and 12 o'clock was the time they were going to start they, here in Dublin. So we were fussing and getting excited, and I remember him saying, <laughs> fine lot you are, big strapping girls like you, he said, all you're anxious to do is to get out, of the, get out of the city and we're on the brink of a revolution. I can remember that so well. We were wakened up, it was about one o'clock at night, and the message that was given was that the prisoner, James Connolly, was wanted to see his wife and eldest daughter. And Mama, Evan, it jumped to my mind immediately, you know, all, you see, all had been executed up to then except himself and Sean McDermott immediately jumped to my mind that he was going to be executed. But Mama had the idea that he wasn't well, that it had taken a turn for the worst. Uh, anyway, we got ready and we went down. We were taken in a, an army lorry right through Dublin. It was, it was an awfully queer, eerie trip because we were staying in William O'Brien's house at that time, coming down through O'Connell Street and all the... still smelled burning, you know. They, they still got that horrible smell of burning and not a soul on the streets, because there was curfew, you know, at that time. And uh, you went through this, the dimly lit streets, at the, and not a soul, you didn't even, we didn't even see a soldier until we came to the bridge. There was someone there, and we went up to the castle. I don't think I told you in the first visit, but every time we went there, we were searched. Well, to see that we didn't bring anything in, to, I suppose, to help mend his life or something like that. But the last time we went up there, the nurse said, I'm supposed to search you. But she said, you give me your word, you have nothing that he can do away with himself with, he said, and I won't search you. So I must have said, she said, what do you think? She said, we would help him to die. So she didn't search us, but she pulled us away. She said, keep away, she said, in case they might look just through the uh, the keyhole or, or open the door suddenly and they say I wasn't doing my job. So then when, after she kept us there for a while and then she opened the door and she called, she said, all right, and then as we went up. So when we got in to my father, he said, well, Lily, he said, I suppose you know what this means. I said, oh, no, don't. Oh, no, not that, he said, yes, Lily. She broke down then and she said, but your beautiful life, James, she said, your beautiful life. And he said, 
wasn't it a full life, Lillian? Isn't this a good end? And she broke, but she still cried. So he says, look, Lily, please don't cry. He says, you'll unman me. So she tried to control herself. I was trying to control myself, too. Then he said to me, put your hand down on the bed. So I put it down on the bed. And he said, that's a copy of this, my statement to the court martial. Try and get it out. So you piece of paper was folded up very tightly, not bigger than that. So I took it anyway. And we were there, so I talked about little things. He was trying to plan our life for him after he was gone. And then they told us. Time was up and we'd have to go. He was to, he used to be shot at dawn, you see. So, Mum, we couldn't get Mum away from the bed. The nurse had to come finally and help her away. And I went to the door, and then I went back to him. That was the last I saw him. But we went back in the morning, you know, to claim his body. We thought we'd have to put in the claim anyway. Of course, they wouldn't hear of it. But Mama had asked the nurse when she was helping her from the room, she said, get me a lock of his hair. And she did that. <laughs>